Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to a sister's Ramadan, making the most of the month of mercy. I am your sister, Naima B. Robert, and I'm honored that you've joined me today. This show is all about answering one central question. How can we as Muslim women make the most of this month and make it a transformational journey from the inside out so that those outer actions are a true reflection of our inner spiritual growth? The purpose of this show is one thing and one thing only, spiritual transformation. So together, we will be exploring eight essential characteristics to develop during this month, inspired by the Quran and Sunnah, but not focused solely on theory, but related to our daily realities as Muslim women from all walks of life. And on today's show, we will be focusing on sincerity. Now, sincerity, ikhlas, is one of the defining characteristics of us as Muslims and as of our worship. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Verily, deeds are only by intentions, and verily, every person will have only what they intended. Whoever emigrated to get something in the world or to marry a woman, then his emigration is for whatever he emigrated for. And as we know, there are two conditions for our actions to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One, that they be done sincerely for his sake, and second, that they be in accordance with the Quran and Sunnah. So how can we use Ramadan to build ourselves as sincere believers? One of the defining characteristics of this show is that we want to use our daily activities to build ourselves as spiritual beings. So in Ramadan, we are doing deeds, good deeds all the time. Some of those good deeds have a bit more status with other people, like mashallah, praying, reading Quran, giving sadaqah. But then there are other things that we do as part of this month that don't seem to have that status, like cooking for our families, like taking care of the elderly, like helping people with a ride to the masjid. So I just want to share with you a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he said, O oh people, make your deeds sincere for Allah Almighty. Verily, Allah does not accept any deed unless it is done sincerely for him. So do not say, this is for the sake of Allah and this is for the sake of my relatives. Verily, it was done for your relatives and none of it was for Allah. And do not say, this is for the sake of Allah and for your sake. Verily, it was done for their sake and none of it was for Allah. <sighs> SubhanAllah. How many times have we done good deeds to please the people, to please our relatives, to please our husband, to please our children, when really those deeds should be done for Allah's sake? And Ramadan is the perfect time to really purify our intention with everything that we do. Because as women, we are on the move in Ramadan. We are serving, we are helping, we are feeding. So sisters, what I would like to invite you to consider is looking at every aspect of how you are living Ramadan and change your intention. Don't do it just because that's what you're supposed to do as a mum. That's what you do because your in-laws want you to. That's what you do because that's how your husband likes it. How about flipping that and making it something that is done sincerely for Allah's sake? One of the most beautiful characteristics of Islam is that the concept of worship in Islam is holistic. It's not limited to those acts of ibadah, like prayer, like fasting, like giving sadaqah. If we have the right intention, our whole lives can be ibadah, as long as we're doing the right thing. So from the moment you wake up to the moment you fall asleep at night, you have the opportunity to do every aspect of everything that you do for the sake of Allah. And so we really should focus on making sure that everything that we do performs what I call double duty, meaning that it's beneficial in this life, it makes you happy, it makes people happy, it's helpful, but more importantly, this is something that we are investing in Akhirah. And the reason why this is important is because you're going to do those deeds anyway. 
you might as well make them count for more. Make them an investment in your akhirah. Make them a means of growing closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, this is the time when we get to keep it real because we know as sisters that we have certain things that we may struggle with during Ramadan. I have been privileged to be working with sisters for a very long time and listening to their concerns and the things that they are finding challenging. And one of the things that comes up again and again is how to juggle the ibadat with family responsibilities, whether that is the cooking, the cleaning, the management of the household, the discipline of the children. You may have young children or babies. You may be breastfeeding. You may be pregnant. You may have elderly parents, or you may live with in-laws. These are all realities that sisters face. And so part of this series is actually getting down to the nitty gritty of the practical steps that you can take to make your Ramadan more transformational and help you to navigate this space. Because let's face it, these people are not going anywhere. These responsibilities are not going anywhere. And so I'd like to offer you a little bit of advice on how to juggle your personal ibadat with your responsibilities as a wife, mother, worker, boss, whoever you are. If we're going to ask the question, how do we juggle our ibadah? Then I would like you to look at two things. Some responsibilities are not going anywhere. Let's get clear on that. Some, on the other hand, are negotiable. So you need to decide which is which. Which are those responsibilities that you can delegate, that you can share, that you can cross off the list completely, and which are those responsibilities that you do have to take care with, that you could potentially reframe. What do I mean by reframe? Again, I'm inviting you to reframe your family responsibilities as ibadah. So don't look at them as a burden. Don't look at them as something that is pulling you away from your purpose and pulling you away from the barakah of this month. Reframe those duties as something that could actually be building you as a Muslim, drawing you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, building that bank account for the akhirah, inshallah. Once you're able to do this, you can let go of the resentment, let go of the frustration, and carve out a space where you can fill your spiritual cup. You have the right to do what feeds you. Whether you need the Quran, listening to it, reading it, reflecting on it, whether you want to be making dua, more dua, whether it's tahajjud, going to the masjid, surrounding yourself with good company, taking a nap, giving yourself a break, getting some fresh air, journaling, these are all different ways that you can fill your spiritual cup so that there is a balance that you are giving out, that you are serving, that you are helping others, but equally you are feeding yourself so that you're not running on empty throughout this whole month and that you are feeling the barakah of the blessing of giving and also filling yourself up so that you have the strength to continue in all the roles that you have. At the end of every episode, I am going to be turning it over to you. Because as I said, this is a transformational journey. So you are a part of this. I'm not here lecturing you. We are having an exchange. And so my challenge to you this week is to identify which two activities, two duties, two responsibilities you could reframe as an action that does double duty. That establishes khair in this life, but also is an investment in the next life. Just two. And then the other challenge I have for you is to find two ways to care for yourself spiritually. Identify what they are. We all have different ways of rekindling our iman. So my challenge to you is to identify what you need to increase in Iman, to feel more connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And my challenge to you is to adopt them and make them part of your routine. Self-care, sisters, should be a part of your normal routine. You shouldn't leave it until you burn out. Make it a part of your daily routine, part of your weekly routine. And then share with us, share with us the two deeds that you found you can easily make into double duty deeds and the two things you're going to do for spiritual self-care. Make sure you tag us 
at Iman channel and Naima B. Robert and use hashtag Sisters Ramadan on all social platforms. And make sure you share in the online group. If you haven't yet joined, then make sure you download the handbook that goes with this series. That handbook is going to walk you through these challenges that I'm giving you. It will also give you a chance to read back over the notes from the show and just make it a more interactive experience. Once you get that handbook, you'll be invited to our private group where you get to interact with me and the other sisters that are also enjoying this show. And inshallah, we can support each other to really have a transformational experience this Ramadan. So today in our first episode, we looked at that crucial ingredient that can transform everything, sincerity. And it's amazing to me that of the Salaf, there were people who said, when I consider myself sincere, I begin to doubt my sincerity. Because sincerity is a journey. We never arrive at our final destination until we meet Allah. And so, not just in Ramadan, and not just with regards to what we've discussed today, I'd like to encourage you and remind myself to maintain sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have been blessed with so many opportunities to gain Allah's pleasure. But the thing that we need more than anything else is that sincerity. And so, going forward, check yourself. Do a check on yourself regularly. Those acts of ibadah, especially the ones that you're used to doing, wearing hijab, saying the dua when you leave the house, saying assalamu alaikum, smiling at people, you may be the person who's used to doing all these things. It becomes routine. When it becomes routine, we can sometimes forget to purify and renew our intention. And that means that we don't necessarily get the barakah. It becomes something that we don't even notice, something that doesn't even have an effect on us internally. And so as you go out in your daily life, you interact with your children, your husband, your family, the people outside, keep Reminding yourself, who is this for? Whose pleasure am I seeking? Bismillah. Let us all strive together to be sincere worshippers of Allah and walk through this earth with sincerity because if we do that, then inshallah, on the last day, we will be met with an abundance of blessings, an abundance of deeds that we did pretty much in our sleep. May Allah bless you, bless your families, and may He bring us together upon khair again. I will see you in our next episode. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.